All right, the final thing we're gonna cover in this lecture are paths, the different types of paths. Um, so there's three different types of paths I want you to be aware of. So the first is the absolute path. Um, this is when you specify the entire path starting from the root directory. The relative path, this is when you specify the path relative to your current directory, and then the lookup path. So we, this will be very confusing at first because we haven't really gotten into executables yet, um, but this is a path that's specified by an environmental variable called path. So let's see how absolute paths work. So we are in um, the, our home directory and if we wanted to get into documents, so we see there's this documents folder within the current directory and let's say we wanted to get into it. So if we wanted to specify it by the absolute path, we'd have to know which directory we're in and so we would start, we would type it like so. So I'm simply using the tab in order to make this easier on me. And then now I've, now I've written out the entire command. So this is giving the absolute path. So I'm, I'm saying it's the absolute path by starting with the root, the backslash. So whenever you start with a backslash, you're saying start at the root directory and go from there. So starting at root, go to the users folder. Within the users folder, go to the Python class folder. And within there, go to the documents folder. So we'll see that this works. Great, I'm within documents. You know, if I run this again, I stay within documents. So this is an example of an absolute path um, in order to navigate to the documents folder within my home directory. If I wanted to do relative path, so I go back to my home directory, so I can either do it by using the cd command or the cd tilde command. So now I'm back within my home directory. And so if I simply write this, I have not started with a backslash. And so the way that the shell interprets this, the shell interprets this to say, um, start from your current directory and then look for a folder called documents. And so lo and behold, I get to the same place as before. You know, if I run this again, this command again, uh, you know, I have an issue uh, because, you know, it, there's no folder within here called documents. So, you know, the command that I use to get to documents can only be used, if I use a relative path, can only be used um, from the home directory. Whereas if I use the absolute path, I can use it kind of wherever. So, you know, I'm starting from root. Um, and so I say go to there, I end up in documents. You know, if I was in, uh, you know, let's say I was in some sort of crazy directory um, like this. You know, so now I'm currently in this directory, you know, within opt, within my installation of conduct. There's this folder called packages. There's this folder called this, info, licenses. You know, if I wanted to get to, back to um, the documents folder, I simply use the absolute path and then I can get back there. All right, so this is hopefully pretty straightforward, not too complicated, absolute path versus relative path. Um, now, let's get into lookup paths. And so in order to get into lookup paths, we have to have an executable. So we've seen executables before, um, you know, so we remember when we were in, so if you go to, for example, here, you know, we see all sorts of executables here. Let's, let's look for the executable. So we wanna run the Python 3, so we wanna run Python, and let's use the conda installation of Python that we've, we've installed. So we know that it's in opt um, in our home directory. We know there's a, there's a directory called miniconda3. And so within here, there's also a folder called bin. So hopefully you're getting used to seeing bin over and over again. This is where we store executables. Um, these are the commands or programs that we can run. So if we go within the Miniconda installation and see what's there, we see you know, all sorts of different things that we can run. So um, again, we see, both, um, we see both executables and then we also see symbolic links. So um, if we want to uh, see just a sub portion of that, we're just looking at the, the, the parts of the folder that start with PY. And so we can see, for example, there's a executable because this is in uh, this kind of reddish orange color called Python 3.9. So what happens if we run it? So the way we run it, so we actually have to, 
specify that we want to run the um, the the executable within this directory. So if we use a single dot, that specifies the the current directory. A double dot indicates the 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 directory above it, uh, and then we're specifying, okay, run this executable called Python 3.9. And so you can see the size of it. This is a pretty large um, file. And this is how we can run the, uh, the Python 3 interpreter. So now we've gotten into Python. So the Python 3 interpreter, the way you recognize it is it has these three underscores. So the prompt for the Python in, uh, is, is the three, sorry, not underscores, the three greater than signs. And then we also see we're running Python 3.9.5. So this is the version of Python that our conda installed. Yours might not be exactly the same, uh, but because you see this anaconda, we know that we're using the, the anaconda or the miniconda uh, installation of this Python. So we can also run this by using the symbolic link. So you know, notice how small this symbolic link is. All this is doing is pointing to this executable right here. So it's in pink. So it's run. It, it's just an. It's just a shorter way to, to do this. So we might not want to type out Python 3.9. We might just want to type out Python 3. And lo and behold, it gets us to the interpreter the exact same way. So everything is the same. Um, so. Uh, we can also run it as just Python. So Python is another symbolic link. I usually like to say Python 3 just to really specify that I'm using the, the Python 3 version that versus the Python 2. But for this in installation of Anaconda, uh, you can just type Python if you want to get into it. All right, so now we've, we've managed to run this Python program. And so Control D is how you exit Python. So if you're having trouble exiting Python, just remember Control D is always what you want to type. Um, if you have some text within there, the control D doesn't work. Um, so you can only do the control D um, with an empty with an empty line. All right, so let's go up a directory. So, so there are no executables in this directory right here. So what happens if we run you know Python 3? So it does not work. You know, if we specify it this way, it does work. So it, we say look in bin and then run this executable right here. So if 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 we run it, you know, if we try to run it from this, it says no such file directory. Now let's see what happens if we just type Python 3. So we're no longer specifying look within the current directory for an executable or symbolic link. It works. So why does this work? Why can we just type Python 3 and get into the interpreter? And you know we could also type Python 3.9. We can also type just Python. And in all cases, we get into this interpreter. And so that's because your, your shell has a way to look for executable files in certain directories. So if you want to know, and the, the, the names of these directories are stored in what's called an environmental variable called path. Um, so this path environmental variable. So how can you see what this path environmental variable is? So for every computer, it's gonna be different. So if you want to see what your path variable is, it's gonna look different from what my path variable is. Um, but if you want to see it, you can use the echo command. So this is one of the things we didn't really cover yet, but this becomes a very useful command for seeing environmental variables. And then we say, I want an environmental variable. So the dollar sign always indicates that I want an environmental variable. And then this is the name of that that I want to see. So if I do that, I see that there's a bunch of directories and each of these directories is separated by a colon. So I'm going to use some, use it, use some Unix magic in order to make this look a little bit better. And so now I've listed each directory um, on a separate line. So you can see these are the absolute paths of all the different directories that your shell looks in in order to find um, executables that, that it can run. And so you see a bunch of these either end with bin or sbin. Um, and, and you know, or conda bin. So usually these files always end in bin. Um, this is one of the exceptions, and I'm not exactly sure why um, it, it does it this way. But you can see these are all the different uh, these are all the different 
directories that it looks for executables. So when it runs Python 3, if I type Python 3, what your shell does is it first looks in this directory. Is there any sort of Python 3 file within there? Um, if so, run it that way. Then it goes to the next line and so on and so forth. So it goes through this the entire time to see if it can find it. You know, so let's say I, I have, uh, I try to run it, but I make a mistake in typing it. Um, so if it can't find it, then it just says, you know, cannot find um, this command Python for. So within all of these directories, there's not a single executable file called Python for. And so that's just what my shell, the ZSH shell is telling me, you know, it can't find anything. So if I ever want to know, you know, so when I run Python 3, if I ever want to know where the absolute path is, of, of what is running. This is where the which command becomes very useful. So the which command again is one of these um, up here that I didn't that I didn't talk about, um, but now it starts to make sense of why it might be useful. So if I type which Python 3, I can see, okay, this is the location of the Python 3 that it's running. It's in my home directory, um, users.python class, and then opt mini kind of 3 bin Python 3. So now I can find exactly where it is. So let's say I want to change the order of the directories that I, um, that I look for things. So this, this, this directory order is important because it says where to look first. So how can I do that? So one of the first things I need to do is, so I can use this command export and what export does is it changes the value of an environmental variable. So I'm specifying I want to change path, and so for export you don't actually need the dollar sign, but I do path equals, and then this is what I want the, the value of path to be. So now, oh, uh, why did that work? Um, Export not valid in this context. Uh, la, la, la. Oh, sorry, there's a uh, extra space that got carried over. Um, there's probably one more space. option to get there and remove the spaces. All right, so now I finally got that to work. All right, so let's see what it equals. So I want to echo again. And so, you know, I start the command. And so now you'll notice that this is the last one issued. So if I want to see that in the, the more friendly way. So this used to be the first directory listed and now it's the last directory listed. So now what happens if I run Python 3? So it still works, but you'll notice that it no longer says Anaconda. And you'll also notice that the version changed from 3.9.6 to 3.9.5. So it's no longer running the same executable. And so I can see what exactly is getting run. And I see, oh, there's also an installation of Python within this directory as well. So this is my systems um, installation. So you know, Mac OS, your Mac OS uses Python as well. So they include an installation of Python 3 when you install it. But I want to use the Conda installation, and so that you know that is a different version. So so if I go to, for example, user.local.bin, and then I'll see, you know, there's a, there's Python as well. So there's actually Python 2 and Python 3 that's installed in this way. So, and then this is kind of what I run right here. And so that's the same now um, as when I run Python 3. You know, there's also actually, if you go to user bin, 
you know, there's also a Python 3 in here, um, and this is a different version 3.82. So there, ten, there can be lots of different versions of Python on your computer, and that can be very confusing, um, and you might get some really weird errors sometimes, and you know, a lot of times the source of that is that, for example, if you install something, you install it for the wrong version of Python. Uh, so just keep this in mind as, as you know, we move forward in this class. So hopefully it kind of makes sense um, how this whole thing works. So if you, you know, we've changed the value of path, um, but you know, we've not made it permanent. Um, so now if we restart it, um, you know, now the original order is the case. And so now if I run Python 3, I get back to the Anaconda version. So hopefully this makes sense. I know it's confusing at first. Um, this is probably a section that you might want to go back to after you get more comfortable, uh, more comfortable kind of with coding. Uh, but you know this this knowledge is is kind of essential to as you get better and better at this. Like uh, this knowledge becomes you know very essential to to debugging things and just being having the savvy to kind of like run things um, well. Um, so if you don't understand this very well yet, you know, make sure you come back to this at a later point in class uh, to make sure you understand it. Um, there are also some other environmental variables as well. Um, so some of the common ones are your home directory, you know, which user is currently using the computer, if you wanted to know which shell you're running, you know, ZSH, uh, you know, what's my current directory is stored in this PWD. You know, you'll notice if you go to a different directory and then it'll change. So this environmental changes kind of as you as you move through the different structures. So this is kind of where this keeps track of your current directory um, and then, you know, the language. So depending on how you've configured your computer, you know, the language that you're using, you know, could be different. It could be British English instead of US English. You know, it could be Chinese. It can be kind of whatever you want to configure your, your computer for. All right, so that was a lot. Um, hopefully I haven't scared you. Um, this, this is one of those things where you just have to start diving in and using these things. And then as you use it more and more, you, you become more familiar with it. So we are gonna spend the class time basically running exercises on these to get you to, to force you to kind of become more, more familiar with how to use the command line.